Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Slim Down and Shape Up. My name is Ben Greenfield, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. In last week's episode, called Hormonal Imbalances and Weight Gain, you learned how hormonal imbalances, and specifically something called estrogen dominance in women, may make it impossible to lose weight no matter how much you exercise. Well, in that episode, I mentioned that I often notice a different reason for resistance to weight gain or a propensity to gain weight in men. And today, you're going to learn about a common hormone deficit in men that may hold you back from being able to achieve your ideal body. From about age 30 on, men's testosterone levels naturally decline with age. While the hormone that can bind testosterone in the bloodstream, called sex hormone binding globulin, tends to increase, this one-two whammy can become even more pronounced when combined with exposure to some of the environmental estrogens that I talked about last week and also in my episode, How to Get Rid of Man Boobs. Now, when testosterone levels drop below what would be considered normal laboratory values, the medical term hypogonadism is used to describe this condition. However, andropause, or occasionally manopause, is a more popular term used to describe this menopause-like experience in men. Now, unlike women, we don't actually experience a complete shutdown of our reproductive system, but when testosterone levels fall, we can experience, among other unpleasant symptoms, a loss of lean muscle mass, a decreased metabolism, and a lower ability to push during a workout, all of which can decrease the ability to lose weight no matter how much exercise that you do. The accompanying loss of libido can also affect our actual motivation to exercise, since I know that many men will admit that one major reason for working out is to look good for the opposite sex. Ultimately, if you're over age 30 and you're experiencing a drop in energy, a drop in libido, and a creeping layer of fat on your waistline, andropause may certainly be a big contributor. Now, if you're curious about how to actually quantify whether or not your testosterone levels are sufficient, there are a few options. In most cases, it's best to get a measurement of your free testosterone, which could be done via a saliva test or via a blood test. But no matter what test method is used to determine your free testosterone, you probably don't have many issues with andropause if your level is in the upper third of what would be considered normal for a 20 to 29-year-old male. That'd be a good number to shoot for. Now, this is typically around in the range of 42 to 145, what's called PG per ml, for a salivary free testosterone result, or about 500 to 827 NG per DL if you're just getting a normal blood-based total testosterone test. Most men don't realize that you can easily get tested at home by using home testosterone test kits, and those are typically salivary kits from sources like directlabs.com, bioletics.com, or wellnessfx.com. I personally test my levels about once every six months. So what can you do if you test your testosterone and you find out or you just suspect that you have low testosterone levels? Well, before discussing how to raise testosterone levels, I should mention that I certainly realize this is a multi-million dollar industry that contains many different opinions, patches, injections, prescription drugs, herbal remedies, and literally hundreds of different testosterone-enhancing formulas and cocktails. So in other words, this topic is a can of worms. Rather than addressing every testosterone-boosting supplement and natural remedy that exists, I'm going to primarily focus on why testosterone might be low in the first place, and important lifestyle choices to naturally boost testosterone levels or help you with andropause. And as you learned in the episode, Do Weight Loss Supplements Really Work? It's those lifestyle changes that tend to make a much bigger difference than simply popping pills. So here are my top three quick and dirty tips for helping you out with low testosterone. The first reason that you may have a testosterone deficiency is because you have too much of your testosterone getting converted into estrogens. The enzyme that's responsible for this is called aromatase, and interestingly, aromatase is upregulated with constantly high insulin levels. What spikes insulin levels? Constant snacking, very large meals, and high consumption of carbohydrates and sugar. So try to limit snacking, eat foods higher in healthy fats, and higher in proteins. 
Quick and dirty tip number two. The second reason you may have a testosterone deficiency is because you have too much sex hormone binding globulin binding up testosterone and keeping it from being active. One of the primary ways that this happens is via a high level of inflammation. My fellow quick and dirty tips expert, the nutrition diva, has a great episode on foods that fight inflammation. And in addition to those tips, you can focus on not exercising too hard for too long and also focus on giving yourself adequate rest and recovery days if you're working out frequently or with a high intensity. Quick and dirty tip number three, chronic stress, low sleep, excessive exercise, and periods of time that you're experiencing heavy stress can decrease testosterone, primarily by elevating your fight and flight cortisol hormone, which causes you to mobilize lots of sugar for you to run from a lion or get to work faster, which results also in a spike in insulin, which you already learned can assist with decreasing your testosterone levels. So in addition, your body, when you're stressed out, has to use a hormonal building block called pregnenolone to make cortisol. And that means that there's that much less pregnenolone available to make testosterone. So you need to make sure that you're controlling stress and sleeping adequately. In summary, lifestyle choices that you can make to avoid a testosterone deficiency would be avoiding excess calorie consumption, limiting sweet carbohydrates, eating more appetite-satiating fats and proteins, avoiding excessive exercise, sleeping more, and stressing less. It's that simple. You don't need to necessarily go out and spend a bunch of money on injections, supplements, and pills. But what about natural hormone replacement therapy? Many physicians who find you to have low testosterone may prescribe testosterone creams and injections, which enter your body in their free and unbound form. This means that you'll immediately notice some very positive changes, but your body does sense this higher testosterone and can eventually shut down production of your natural testosterone elevators, particularly hormones called luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. As more and more free testosterone gets introduced into your body via these creams and injections, your cell's receptor sites for testosterone can lose their sensitivity, and your body will need more and more natural hormone replacement therapy to keep getting good effects. So while natural hormones could certainly help you to raise testosterone, you'll need to take more and more down the road and you'll feel pretty awful if you ever stop. So be sure to have a frank discussion with your physician or your medical advisor before making this choice. I realized that in the past two episodes, I've only just scratched the surface on how hormones can affect weight gain and weight loss. So if you have more questions, you can ask them over at facebook.com slash getfitguy. And if you're still having trouble getting fit despite whatever workout program that you're doing, the problem could be that your workout just isn't working for your unique body type. And that's where my book comes in. You can check out my new book, Get Fit Guy's Guide to Achieving Your Ideal Body for the inside scoop on how to get fit for your unique body. You can grab the book over at getfitguy.com and it's also available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and your favorite retailer. So check that out. Once again, One URL where you can start at is getfitguy.com. And until next time, this is the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. 